Hey guys, welcome back to the 15th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework of Python. And in this one, we're going to actually be starting the registration process. So in the last video, you remember we finished off with the forward slash account forward slash register. And there's no page here yet. So I need to start off by defining forward slash account forward slash register. So I'm going to do that in the accounts URLs. And I'm going to put a comma and add another URL here. I'm going to say it's going to start and then it's going to be register and then it's going to end just like that. So now I'm going to do views dot register and I'm going to say uh, name is equal to register. So now if we go over to the views we need to define that view here. So register now this is going to be the view that gives us our registration form so for now to get this up and running what I'm going to do is use the built-in Django user creation form that is built into Django so that we don't have to spend time writing our own custom form just yet uh, we could do that maybe later but to save time in this video I'm not going to do that now I can actually get rid of this as well and I'm going to say from django.contrib dot auth dot forms import user creation form so that's the form that Django has defined for us that we're going to be using to render what is going to be a username field and a password field or technically two because it's going to ask for a password and then a password confirmation and it's also going to give it give us those password fields in the sort of little password circle things so you don't see the plain text which is nice and secure so if people look over your shoulder they can't see your password so to do that I'm going to write if request dot method is equal to post so the post method in HTTP pretty much means the user is sending data to the web server as opposed to receiving it so like in this for example we've requested forward slash account forward slash register and it doesn't exist but if you look here it says request method was get so it's trying to get that page from the web server which didn't exist in this case but if we were entering data into a form we could post that data to the web server and that's the data in the form that's being sent to the web server so that's what I mean by post and then I can say I can use this use creation form so I'm literally just going to say form is equal to user creation form and that's going to take the post data that we get from request so request.post so we do have post data in this case because it's past this if statement and I'm going to say if the form dot is valid now this is sort of a Django forms thing but it's pretty much saying now that the data that is entered by the user has passed all the validation checks provided in that form, that user creation form, now that that's been passed, so there's a nice secure password, there's a username that hasn't already been sold in the database, so it's unique in other words, now it's going to do uh, the next part which is going to be form.save, so that's actually saving the contents of that form, and I'm going to just return so at that point that pretty much creates the user so it's saving their data in the database and then all I have to do is return a redirect and I can say uh, let's just say forward slash account for now uh, and I need to import redirect here so that it knows what I'm talking about when I say redirect so now this is going to handle when there is post data but remember the user has to fill in that form and then send that form to us for us to receive that data but we haven't given them the opportunity to load that form in the first place so the first time that they request uh, this view is going to be a get request and it's going to be asking for that blank form for the user to fill in so what I'm going to say is else to handle that I'm going to just say form is equal to a blank user creation form so user creation form and then it's just going to be empty like that rather than with the request.post data because we have none and now that's pretty much it for the logic of this register sort of 
registration process. Now all I need to do is handle uh, the arguments themselves. So I'm going to say, uh, well I need to pass the form through to the templates as a, a variable. I can just pass the form. So I'm going to define a dictionary and I'm going to say form is a form. So that means that I can refer to that form object in, in the template. So that template is going to be uh, defined by this next line. So I'm going to say return render, so using this render method up here. And then I'm going to say request, because the render method takes request as a required parameter every single time. And then the name of that template, so it's going to be accounts. So accounts being under this templates and then I'm going to say forward slash reg form, short for registration form, dot HTML, and then I'm going to pass in arguments, just like that. So now I'm going to create that HTML document that is going to be defined as reg form, dot HTML, and all I'm going to do here for now is, well firstly, like uh, all the files I've got at the moment, I'm going to extend uh, the base.html so you want to extend the base pretty much on every single HTML template that you write now so that you only have to write that base code once that's going to be on every single page and now I'm going to say uh, I'm going to edit the body block so I'm going to say block body which is going to replace the one in the base.html and I'm going to say end block because remember we always have to end uh, end the blocks in this ginger templating because it's not based on whitespace like Python is. So if we say end block like that, and then I'm going to say form as well, and it's going to be a post method. And remember we need to put the CSRF token, so the cross site request forgery token, which pretty much makes it more secure uh, means of sending data through the HTTP protocol. So I'm going to just say that, and I'm going to say CSRF underscore token, and then I'm going to say the actual form that we pass through to this template. I'm going to say form dot as paragraph. The dot as p that just means uh, it's going to render it using paragraph tags. You could say dot ul if you want to render it using ul elements, for example. Uh, now. Uh, let's go and test that, see if it works. So I'm going to refresh and forms. There you go, <laughs> missed the S again. So now I'm going to try and refresh that. So that's a bit ugly because I haven't got it in a container. So I'm just going to go reg form and I'm going to say div container. So this is a bootstrap thing and I'm going to put that form inside. So now it looks pretty nice. Uh, so let's say, just add a little header here. I'm going to say h1 uh, register, just so that it's nice and clear what, what we're going to do here. So now this is our registration form, and this pretty much works at this point. And we don't have a button yet, so that's a problem. Uh, I'm just going to copy the one out of login.html, and because it's really just the same, it's just another button, just so that you can submit that data in the form. And I'm just going to say uh, submit. And now we should have a button. There you go. So let's try this out. So if I go to the admin, forward slash admin, I'm just going to open that in another tab so we can see. And we've got max and we've got test. So let's say test two. So if this works, then we should have another user account and it should just be created in this Django model when we submit this form. So I'm going to add a password here. Now the cool thing about using this form that's built into Django is it, it gives you some validation as well. So if they try to set a password that's too similar to the username or it's too weak or anything like that, it's going to tell them or if the username's not unique, then it's gonna tell them. So if we submit that, so my data was valid, it's posted that to the web server, and now we should see, if we refresh the Django admin, that we get a new user in the Django, ad, 
in the Django admin. So that's really, really cool. So that registration process is literally done now. One thing we could do is maybe customize it a bit, maybe ask their email and their first and last name or something like that. And to do that, we need to write a custom form, which I'm gonna do in the next video.